Welcome everybody to the next episode. As we talked about on the prior episode, we were prepping the gimbal housing assembly. And you can see here, we've let the marine paint dry overnight. Came out pretty good. If you notice, there's a little uh, indent right there. That's not from uh, corrosion that wasn't chipped off, but basically it just uh, dimples into the aluminum itself and I wasn't able to get that out even with the wire brush so went ahead and used our uh, marine paint and covered it up came out pretty good nice and dry corrosion wasn't as bad as I've heard some people report you can see like in this corner here it actually corroded a little bit more same thing in that corner this boat originally was manufactured on the coastline in Texas so I imagine early on in its life it actually saw a good amount of salt water which makes sense given the amount of corrosion we have here which also brings us back to the idea of what type of zincs are being used in this boat like I said that's down in here and we'll talk about that on a later episode you can see the channel now is nice and clean there's no issues as we move across here. What we're going to talk about next is before we apply this we're going to talk about what the seal looks like, which seal you need and here we go. So here's what we're going to be using. This is part number 3852550. This one is made in the US. It looks like I described in my prior video, it looks like a neoprene rope that's going to be the seal for the gimbal housing and then the other piece you're going to need and it goes by a few different brands but this is a gasket sealing compound I bought the bigger container full of it because well, I don't even need to open it you can see what it looks like here on the outside it's a brownish look to it and it, re it rarely ever dries even as I touch it here it actually is still tacky and it remains tacky for the life of its um, you know application so anyway you're gonna need this you cannot install the transom seal and definitely get a big container of it I've I bought smaller containers and you end up using it this is the uh, one pint 16 ounces get the bigger version especially if you're doing a good amount of projects here and then in terms of the seal let's go ahead and open this up and I want to show you how it is um, at which this is applied here. All right, and here is what the seal looks like. If you remember it on my prior episode, I talked about how the seal was round and the seal that was pulled out was definitely not round. Let me show you what it looks like. We're gonna do a dry run and this seal can be installed wrong, believe it or not. You would think that it can't be, but yes, it definitely can be installed wrong. So we'll do a dry run. This is not how it's going to be applied uh, per se, but I'm going to show you how it needs to be installed. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is take the ends together and make sure they're flat, and then that's going to, you have some waves at the bottom, but that's not a big deal, but you want to start off where this is the, uh, the very top. So from there, what we're going to do is this part up here is where you need to start. So you're going to have one end on this side over here, and the other end goes the opposite direction. I'll go ahead and start it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, see how where we have the steering arm up here? We also have where the ends meet. And the reason why is because the theory is water will eventually leak between those two ends. And if you're above the water line, which is where those two ends are, you'll never have a problem. If you start those ends for example, over here on the left side, or heaven forbid you started at the bottom, you're gonna have a lot of future leaks going on. So the practice here is you're gonna want to start with getting that at the very top, right above the steering arm is gonna be your target. Now, one thing to note, and I forgot to mention this piece, is your termination sections are going to be on top up here but you also need to remember as well that this is pretty much like a one size 
fit all transom seal. So you are going to have to cut it to length, which means you're going to have to be super duper precise in terms of your measurement on your gimbal housing. So everyone's measurement is going to be a little bit different. So just take, you know, take a lot of measurements on it when you're doing this because if you mess it up there is no real way I mean I guess if you splice a piece kind of towards the top you may be able to do it that way but yeah it's gonna be tough okay so you can see we've got some yellow compound that I put in between the gimbal housing and the seal and the reason for that is if you just try to put the seal in place it will fall out. There's not enough tension on this surface here to be able to hold it in place. So you need something to kind of keep it in, in place there. I have used before the gasket sealing compound in between that surface and the housing, but it won't stay. It'll actually just fall out. So there's a few different methods you can you can do to get that seal to stay what I like to use because it's it's easy uh, to find is it's made by uh, Permatex super high-tech uh, gasket sealant and what it does is it's it's good at bonding seals to a given surface so this is definitely a way to go the only thing is when you apply it you need to allow uh, three hours for it to basically hold the seal in place and I've also read in a few marine manuals you can use a product on that inner edge called 3M scotch grip rubber adhesive 1300 different product I'm sure it does similar and has similar properties to this permatex gasket sealant so it's up to you and what you want to do like I said it's called uh, the other one is called 3M scotch grip rubber adhesive 1300 and they I, I've seen some manuals recommend that as well but I used this on my last rebuild and it, it came out pretty good and you can see once it's it's hooked in place it's actually in pretty good shape if you do try to use the gasket sealant compound around the edges like I said you're gonna run into nothing but problems if you try to mix and match these right away as well it won't stay and your seal will come flapping out so You'll need to use that to, to get it to, to stay put. If you're wondering how long the seal needs to be, and you'll see right below this tape here, this is how much of the seal wasn't needed. And I took a measuring tape and that is seven eighths. So if you wanna cheat and figure out, given that part number we went over earlier, how much you're gonna have to cut off, seven eighths is the measurement so there you go all right so anyway let's talk about the ceiling surface here now that everything is in place you're going to want to apply some gasket sealing compound i've heard before that they say not to put anything between this surface and the gel coat or the outer coating of your boat i don't believe that to be a good idea because when the salt waters or lake water hits this seal. This is all that stands between you getting water into your boat and not. So, and there's also complications from the lake water drying out this seal. So I have always on all sealed surfaces that have rubber gaskets, I always apply the marine gasket sealing compound just it's something i use for everything the only time i don't use it is for flares because flares get their seal from the inner uh inner piece here but like this surface here where this water neck is that would get gasket sealing compound they say you don't need to around here but if you know anything about rubber seals as they get exposed to salt water and different types of water it's if it has a sealing compound around it it's going to last a lot longer than if you install it dry so definitely put some sealing compound around your exhaust same thing around this area too if you try to mix like i said earlier the permatex 
and gasket seal compound, they will cancel each other out and it won't stick. So keep that in mind. You will have to be very careful. Okay, so whether you use the 3M 1300 all the way around on the inside here, or if you use the Permatex gasket sealing compound around it, either one will get you in good, sh good shape. Like I said, you just can't mix the gasket sealing compound on the inside, right? And this, they, they will cancel each other out. So definitely won't work. So pick one, get the 1300 or the Permatex gasket sealing compound to put in there and you'll be in good shape. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the transom plate now as we're about to install this into the boat. Okay, so you can see here, one of the things you want to do is go through and degrease everything. This area around where the shaft comes through is prone to have a lot of grease and whatnot in there. So you want to go ahead and degrease. You can see on in this area right here where the zinc is connected, we had a, a little bit of corrosion. So you want to get all that out with a good wire brush, stainless steel preferably, and then recoat this. You can see the coating, this outer coating that came with it from the factory is kind of uh, chipped off right here. And like I said, this is where all the grounding takes place compared to over here. You can see this one uh, looks a lot better. So definitely go ahead and take your wire brush if you have this issue on yours and then recoat um, that area just to make sure you get a you get good contact. Okay, so I went, went ahead and recoated this area with some uh, marine paint so it would have a a good sealed surface against corrosion. All right, so you can see here, I've got the gasket sealant compound applied all the way around the surfaces here. And I did make sure to get it inside the little crevices here too, so it kind of wraps itself around both sides, giving it that, that really nice seal. Keep in mind, this seal does flatten out once installed, so that's why it was kind of important on the other side to make sure it was perfectly clean in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we were gonna take this gimbal housing, install it permanently in the boat with the gasket sealing compound around the edges. And we will take the transom plate and go ahead and start mounting it. We'll go over the torque specs and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and get the transom plate mounted at this point. And from here on out, we'll be installing stuff inside the boat. So here we go. So in preparation for getting the gimbal housing installed on the boat, you wanna make sure, and I forgot to mention this earlier, that your gel coat on the outside is perfectly clean. You wanna run some sandpaper along this edge. You can't have any divots or anything, so keep that in mind as you're about to install the transom plate against the boat there. You wanna make sure that surface is perfectly clean. So anyway, let's go ahead and install this thing. And we'll go ahead and start mounting the bolts and I'll give you the whole 411 on how to torque everything down as there is a very specific procedure on that. Okay, so as most of you will be in the same position I'm in, is you're gonna have your trim pump sender still attached. Some people won't, but if you don't, by the way, watch my video series on how to bleed all this out. What you're gonna do first is go ahead and hand this inwards and make sure you don't crimp any of these lines. Also feed in your water inlet and your shift cable as well. And then be very careful as you're putting this gimbal housing inside your boat because you want to make sure you're not having any issues with your um, hoses, number one, down here. And sometimes if you haven't test fit, I did an earlier video, I actually did a test fit of all these bolts, so I know they're gonna work just fine. If you haven't done a test fit, be very, very patient during this part of the boat process, the install process because you could run into some major issues where it simply put does not go in. If that happens, back up and try again. But hopefully as you saw in my prior videos, you took the time to do a test run 
before you got to this point. So anyway, I'll go ahead and feed this in and we'll go ahead and try to get it installed and then we'll meet you back on the inside of the boat. All right. It's the first time I've done a night video in quite some time, but I had some extra time tonight, so I wanted to make sure we got it on film for y'all. So, take a look here. You notice the two bottom bolts do not protrude as much as the plates, uh, the transom plate bolts do, and that's normal. So if you're trying to get this, these to stick out a lot, you don't need to worry about that. Your focus is going to be on these four bolts, and you'll know that you've pulled the gimbal housing in far enough because you'll have your transom plate handy with you and you can go ahead and slap it on and make sure it's enough to start a bolt and washer. Okay, so we can work around the shadows here. You'll see with the transom plate we have enough meat, so to speak, to get a single bolt on these. And what we're going to do is we will apply just the single nut just to get this the gimbal housing closer towards us and then as a permanent solution we'll go ahead and, and tighten these but for now like this one for example we'll just go ahead and thread a single bolt on it okay so you can see I got the 5-8 bolts just the bolts or the nuts I keep calling them bolts I meant nuts uh, you'll go ahead and start those on the bolts just enough where we can draw that gimbal housing towards us alright so let's talk about a few things here that we need to discuss such as when you draw this transom plate in where it needs to go undoubtedly someone's gonna have this happen so I, I figured if you you're gonna we're gonna need to talk about this if you draw the transom all the way in the gimbal housing which is on the other side if you draw these bolts is basically to the point where we start getting close to the torque specs and you don't have any bolts sticking out that means your transom which mine is really dirty is too thick if you do run into that situation where your transom is too thick, you're going the best thing to do so you don't have to start all over is to take a permanent marker and draw around the transom plate all the way around, obviously not where the exhaust is, but where that bolt is all the way around. And you're going to need to use typically like a grinder of some type and you're gonna to have to take material out to allow this transom plate to go further in and I understand it's gonna be a lot of work and you're gonna probably be really frustrated if that's the case but it is possible that you may build your transom too thick so if that does happen don't panic just mark along the edge like I showed you and the best thing to do is to take the sander which is typically found on the grinder that I used to demo the bolt um, and you can sand that edge that this mating surface connects to allowing it to go further in. I've had to do that before myself because I kind of went a little crazy with the thickness overall thickness of the transom so if it does happen don't panic draw that line around it and you can cut some of the material out. So that's all you're doing essentially is cutting some of the material out of the transom. All right, so considering you got everything good and you're still progressing well, let's talk about that. So if you notice, there's a lot of shimmying room as you start to get this transom plate installed. And there's a reason for that because what you need to do is stick a level, not on the square, but on the place that the actual motor mounts to which is down here two foot level would be good and take a look at how level it is and you can see here 
if I can get it to focus real good. And we're right on. So you you do have the opportunity to adjust this. So as you get the bow installed, or sorry, the motor installed in here, if you notice that you're having to adjust your front motor mounts way too much on one side versus the other, then that may be the case that you need to come back in here and loosen these bolts up and uh, try it again. So keep in mind some of the prerequisites here is you need to make sure the top of your boat is fairly level. Just like we had when we put the stringers in, make sure this is level or try to find some baseline inside the boat, making it completely level. Like you may want to use the front motor mounts as your, your standard, but this boat throughout the build, just left and right, has been level. So we're not really changing anything, including the motor mounts for the front. This is going to remain the same. Everything has been leveled throughout the entire process. So that's why I say, hopefully you got to the point here where everything is still level and nothing's really changed. So this way, when you start getting that motor installed, everything will look great. So this is fine. All right. So what I will do at this point is I'm going to back out some of these nuts so I can put the washer behind them, which is required. And we'll start talking about the torque specs for each one of these. And we'll talk about the order in which you actually tighten them. Okay, so we talked about this little guy earlier in the season of episodes. And I don't know if you recall, but when you have a rotten transom on an OMC or Volvo and you have this little guy, this is what basically borders your exhaust. This will be bent. 100% will be bent every time. Try your hardest not to just install it with it bent. So you're going to need to go and take a good um, BFH or a big, uh, big hammer and flatten it back. So when you go to install it, it sits nice and flat. If you don't, what's going to end up happening is this will not sit level and it'll end up causing some issues. Another thing to note here, as you're drawing the gimbal housing, all right, let's see if we can get the shadow out of here. There we go. So, and like I said, this way, when you go to draw these little guys here, it'll draw nice and flat. So let's go ahead and get some washers started. And in case I haven't mentioned it yet, if you are drawing this forward and you notice this is getting stuck, pay attention here. We talked about it in earlier episodes, but you just want to make sure you've got enough play in these areas. We kind of checked that. I remember when we were doing the mock-up, so mine is fine. But if you're having issues drawing this in, uh, keep that in mind because that's going to be a, a huge issue. Um, if it's too close. I have done one before where this was almost, this bottom piece right here was just, this edge was sitting right on this bottom of the bowling pin. So you, you want to be careful it doesn't happen for you and just, you know, just be cognizant of that as you're drawing this in. Uh, and the other thing too is these bolts down here don't have washers. So if you're trying to put a washer in it, you don't need it. Okay, so the other thing you need to be aware of too are these 916 bolts. Most notably, you're likely going to forget about it, so don't forget. The, they are not stainless steel bolts, as you can imagine. These are actually grade 5, so it's kind of one of the rare cases that you're going to be using non-stainless steel bolts, and that's because there's going to be a lot of um, weight being held on these, so the manufacturer kind of deemed grade 5 to be the better ones. And believe it or not, they actually don't rust. If you wanted to do something don't don't use stainless steel bolts if you're going to do something um, and you want to change it so it's less likely to rust with these two is upgrade the grade eight out of grade five these initially didn't have that much um, of any kind of tarnish or anything on them so they're actually still pretty good so i just reused them but if you wanted to do something different with these two uh, go with grade eight and they won't rust they'll be fine it's well above anywhere where they get exposed to um, water so that's these are actually going to be part of the torquing sequence too. 
So you do need to have these installed. All right, so you can see here, we've got the washers and nuts installed and we got it pretty tight, not, not like to torque specs per se on these sides. See if I can get the shadow to go away here, but not, not to like crazy torque specs, but you want to get everything tightened up here before we start torquing it down and start talking about the proper order. Another thing to mention, I forgot to say it earlier, is these 916 bolts that go in the top, they do need gasket seal and compound on them, just in case you forget. So you may be able to use like um, bolt seal and compound, but use gasket seal and compound instead because you have it already. You've been using it throughout this project and you'll be using it some more and it's what the manufacturer calls for. So make sure you apply that to those bolt threads on the upper part of the transom plate. All right, so what we're gonna do now is focus in on torquing. If you're not used to using a torque wrench, and this is the first time in the series that we are gonna be using one, if you don't have one, time to get one. I know some of my old school people who don't believe in torquing. Uh, well, this is your chance to start to learn because you're gonna have to have one on this part. It's kind of critical, otherwise you're gonna throw stuff off. So there's an order at which you're going to torque this um, torque this uh, transom plate so depending on which model you have sometimes you're only going to have six bolts and sometimes you're going to have um, eight so this one has a total of eight bolts if you have a total of six basically I'll, I'll show you that afterwards on how you're going to do it but for your bolts to start off with the first four are going to be the ones that are focused in on your uh, transom plate. So that's this uh, bluish black part. That's where these parts are going to get torqued down first, excluding, for right now, the bolts. So we're just going to focus in on one, two, three, and this one down here. That's four. So first and foremost, you want to set your torque wrench to anywhere between 20 the 25 foot pounds. I split it down the middle, I've got 22.5. So, just so you're aware. All right, so your first one, just so you're aware, is where the ground strap is. That's gonna be your number one. So, all right, and this is the one where we're gonna start off. And like I said, 20 to 25 foot pounds of torque. That's gonna pretty much do it for this episode. Stay tuned to the second part. I know this was kind of a long video. Stay tuned to the second part of this video series. There's going to be some critical things that you need to know before you continue getting this installed. So we're going to stop it right now. Stay tuned to part two. Hope you liked the video so far. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Leave some comments because I'm sure you all are going to have quite a lot of comments. Let me know what you're thinking. We'll hit you up on the next episode.